بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس کورس از اباؤٹ ٹربو کوڈنگ ٹربو کوڈز آر کمبینیشن آف بلاک اینڈ کانولیوشنل کوڈز دے ریکوائر دا دے ریکوائر آ بلاک ٹو بی فارم بیفور ان کوڈنگ کین بیگن بٹ فار ان کوڈنگ شفٹ رجسٹرز آر یوزڈ جسٹ لائک ان کولیوشنل کوڈ انسٹیڈ آف پوٹنگ پیرٹی بٹس Turbo codes use at least two convolutional component encoders and two maximum a priority algorithm component decoders. Turbo coders perform well in the low SNR environment. At high SNRs, Reed Solomon code have better perfor- performance than turbo codes. This is a generic diagram of a turbo encoder as you can see that uh, we are adding encoders these are convolutional encoders and uh, they are added in parallel along with an interleaver turbo code uses two or more recursive systematic convolutional codes We have seen what is a recursive systematic convolutional code in the last course, working in parallel on the same information. There is a parallel structure that uses two or more RSC cores with each with different interleaver. <coughs> so these interleavers are different from each other. Different interleaver for each RSC encoder produces uncorrelated version of the same input information in order to produce parity bits from each RSC encoder that are independent. This makes interleaver actually makes the output from each encoder, encoder independent from the uh, input or the other encoder and this interleaver is actually uh, uh, the main uh, strength of the turbo encoder. We will see how it works. The, the independence of parity bits depends on the type and length of the interleaver. So as we can understand that what we requ- uh, this is the required uh, property of turbo encoder that these the outputs f- uh, of these encoders must be independent of each other or uncorrelated and this un- independence depends on the interleaver. <coughs> the code words produced by encoder and uh, in encoder 1 and encoder 2 are different because of interleaver now the code words which are produced here <coughs> how they are different they are different because of this interleaver the code word is produced by this encoder however these encoders are identical there is no difference between the encoders but the diff outputs are different this yk1 is different from yk2 be just because of this interleaver as we know that a code word produced is considered a strong or high weight code word if its average hamming distance is high with all the other code words that is a code word having hamming distance 3 is a high weight code word compared to a code word having hamming distance 1 the reason of having two encoders is that to produce a strong code word with the concatenation of the two encoders suppose encoder 1 produces a weak code word then encoder 2 most likely will produce a strong code word because of shuffling of input sequence using the using the interleaver on the receiver side each decoder works on the same information xk but different parity bits yk produced by the by the encoders now as you know this the purpose or the function of interleaver is more clear that uh, suppose a uh, code word which is produced by this encoder is weak by weak we mean that the hamming distance is not uh, much then in the in uh, code word produced by encoder 2 is most likely not necessarily but most likely produced will be strong because of this interleaving because the input bits uh, have changed and as we know that the code word produced by a convolutional code depends on the in, uh, input bits in a typical turbo code there may be as many as 20000 symbols in a frame now let's have a look at a turbo code a turbo encoder this is called 1 by 3 turbo encoder 
these are two shift registers and as you said they are recursive systematic as you can see there is a feedback path in this one as we have, uh, when we saw the convolutional coder in, uh, in convolution uh, encoding that uh, encoder did not have any feedback path or any uh, back path but since it is a recursive systematic uh, convolutional encoder that's why as you can see that these uh, output values are affecting uh, the input values also so and you can also see that these encoders encoder 1 encoder 2 are identical there is no difference between the two the only different the but the out uh, this yk1s and this uh, uh, yk1s produced here is the information bit and this yk1p and yk2p are the parity bits these two parity bits are different from each other and they are e different from each other just because of this interleaver actually this pi is the symbol of interleaver now trellis code for 1 by 2 rate RSE encoder shown in the rate uh, 1 by 3 turbo encoder this encoder this is the this is the trellis code or trellis diagram for just this one encoder over here this is actually 1 by 2 encoder over here and uh, why do we say that this is 1 by 3 because the when we are going to transmit we are not going to transmit the information bit for both the in from both the uh, encoders we will just transmit one in uh, series of uh, information bits and then the parity bits produced by this encoder and parity bits produced by this encoder that's why it is called 1 by 3 turbo encoder uh, we have seen that what is the meaning of this trellis code we will not go how we have achieved it but we will just say that when the uh, when it, it is the uh, state of these registers over here is 0 0 and the input is 0 then we will get out uh, 0 0 at output and if one put uh, one is the input then at the output it is 1 1 and it is the same as we have seen before now suppose the input bits are 1 0 1 0 1 Zero, 0 so using this trellis diagram over here we are going to encode the uh, input bits but remember we are going doing this only for this first encoder here we have not uh, this is not the whole complete output but it is the output from here from this encoder only so when it is 1 for one we can see that uh, when the input uh, when the initial state is zero zero and input is one then the output should be one one as you can see it is written one one over here and the next state will be zero one we have come to zero one now the next input bit is zero when the next input bit is zero and we are at zero one so it says that if you are at uh, zero one and the input bit is zero then the output should be 0 1 as you can see it is 0 1 over here and the next state should be 1 1 next state is 1 1 we have come to 1 1 then for 1 again at this stage it says if the input is 1 then the uh, it will remain on the uh, in the same state 1 1 and the output will be 1 0 the output is 1 0 over here and for 0 from this point it means we have to go up we have to come to 1 0 and the output is 0 1 the output is 0 1 then again the input is 1 when the inp input is 1 and you are at 1 0 as you can see from here it goes to 0 0 and the out at the output you will get 1 1 at the output we have got 1 1 and then this is 0 0 because if you are at 0 and you the input is 0 then the output is 0 0 and you remain at 0 0 and then next output is 0 0 this is only to flush the uh, encoders to make it uh, bring it back to the zero state this is we call flushing so this is what we get but if you ca if you pay some attention there you will find that uh, the you can see that these outputs are systematic why they are systematic because look at this one 1010100 these bits are same as the input bits and these are the parity bits added with the 
this added with this input bits that's why it is systematic as we know that if uh, the system bits uh, uh, parity bits are added in the end of the information bit then we call it a systematic so that is why this is called recursive systematic uh, convolutional code in the convolutional encoding uh, pre previously when we saw that uh, there was no uh, systematic output it was not necessary that you at the at output you will get one one maybe the at output you would have got zero one in that case of course it uh, this is parity bit and this is not a uh, information bit now we now co encode the output bits using bipolar encoding plus one or uh, for 1 and minus 1 for 0. Now we are, we are doing assigning voltage levels or bi for using bipolar encoding method to 0 and 1. So we are here I have just separated the systematic in parity bits here the, these same the same result over here into uh, different columns to just to show that what is the uh, bipolar encoding for systematic bit and what is uh, bipolar encoding for parity bit and as it says that plus one is for one and minus one is for zero here as you can see plus one for one minus one for zero plus one for one minus one for zero as you can see over here and this systematic so the polarity uh, the, the bipolar according to bipolar encoding the systematic bits are plus one minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one minus one and parity bits are like this now this is the output of encoder one only over here this encoder one now we have to find the output of as, and uh, as we saw that the output which we got uh, the uh, systematic bits are from this uh, part and the parity bits are from this uh, at this output by k 1 comma p now the input for uh, ec2 that is encoder 2 is to be interleaved shuffled first there are many kinds of interleavers and they have their uh, their own advantages and disadvantages interleaver plays very important important role in turbo coding two major types of interleavers are block interleaver and random interleaver block interleaver it is the most common type of interleaver used in communication systems it writes the information bit sequence in rows and reads uh, column wise it is very simple that the information is uh, uh, written in the row form uh, but it is read in co uh, column order random interleaver it uses fixed random permutation scheme to map the information sequence to the permutation order let's interleave the input bits sequence using random interleaver using the following random pattern so what is the random pattern over here what random pattern it is, is that input if the input uh, whatever the uh, input bit at position 1 will be placed to in uh, position 3 uh, bit at position 2 will go to position number 4 bit at position 3 will go to 1 bit at position 4 will go to 5 bit at position 5 will go to 2 6 to 6 and 7 to 7 so the input sequence which we, uh, we had was 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 this is the input sequence we are going to encode so using that same interleaver what we do is that we have to put this one at position 3 so we have put it at position 3 this is uh, signified uh, or emphasized by these colors that this one the red color bit has come over here at position 3 this one has the bit at position number 1 is placed at position number 3 then this uh, 0 is placed at 4 as it says and this uh, 1 goes to 3 uh, goes to 1 it has come over here this 0 goes to 5 it has come over here this 5 goes to 2 it has come over here and 6 and 7 remains as they are so this is the fixed pattern sequence whenever any bit comes in it will be uh, uh, interleaved in the same pattern using the same uh, pattern of interleaving now after interleaving as we can see the uh, input sequence has changed now it has become 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 so uh, encoder 2 input bits are 1 1 0 0 0 0 
now we start doing the same way the encoding method is very much similar for one it is it has come to one over here as you can see i'm not going to explain it again it is a simple thing and what we the output which we get is that one 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 zero one one zero 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 now we again do the same bipolar encoding for these uh, output bits as well as you can see that uh, these are again systematic ag as well because you can see that the uh, output produced over here 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 so it confirms that this is a systematic bit now we need to puncture the output of encoder 2 because we do not need to transmit the systematic bits of the encode uh, and that gives rate 1 by 3 turbo code the transmitted bits are as shown below so as we are what we are going to do there we are not going to transmit the systematic bits from uh, both the uh, outputs however they are interleaved because but uh, there is a de interleaver over there at the decoder which can be used to uh, uh, produce the same sequence so what we are doing we are sending systematic bits from the uh, un non interleaved systematic bits plus one minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one minus one and parity bits which are produced by this one and this one of course it is produced by after inter interleaving so at the uh, decoder we will de interleave it <sighs> turbo decoder uses soft decoding methods like maximum a posteriori map algorithm or soft output viterbi algorithms SOVA soft output algorithm output perf outperforms hard decision algorithms because they have available a better estimate of what the sent data actually was we have seen this hard decision algorithm in Viterbi form uh, in the uh, convolutional decoding map mac maxi maximizes uh, the output prob uh, probability based on some knowledge of the input a priori probabilities and soft decision output from the demodulator so it is called a it is called soft in soft out algorithm in communications this algorithm was first identified by uh, ball cock uh, jelinek and reviv and therefore it is also known as bcjr algorithm